I'm Bill Shaw with Palm Beach County Cooperative Extension Service and I'm a commercial horticulture extension agent. We work with the landscapers and the nurseries in the county. Today we want to talk a little bit about white flies that have become quite a bit of a problem out in the landscape. There's about 64, 65 different types of white flies in Florida. There's just a couple of them that we want to talk about today that are problems for us. One is the ficus white fly, and it's been around for several years and causes defoliation of ficus plants. Another one is the Ragose spiraling white fly, and you don't really see that on ficus too much, but attacks a lot of other plants like coconut palms, gumbo limbos, and a whole bunch of other plants. And then there's a third one called the Bondar's nesting white fly. So those three are probably our most problematic ones right now. First of all, let's start with the ficus whitefly. If you look at the ficus and the leaves are defoliating, or even before they defoliate, if you look at the undersides of the leaves, you'll see evidence of these white flies. There's the adults that fly around. They're little tiny white insects about the size of a uh, head of a straight pin. Um, there are other insects that kind of look similar when they're flying out in the sun, too. But on the underside of the leaves, you'll see little things that look like little flat scale insects, and they can be a little hard to see. And those are the younger stages of those white fly. Now they've been on our ficus hedge probably since at least early spring, and their population builds and builds and builds, and then toward the end of the summer and into the fall, that's when all the leaves fall off. So that's the problem there. Ficus white flies don't attack plants other than ficus. They only attack those. Now the Ragose spiraling white fly is a newer one. It's just been around for a couple of years and it causes a tremendous amount of white wax on the leaves of the plants. We call that flocculent, waxy flocculent. It also produces a lot of excrement called honeydew, and it's a very sugary type of material, and a mold called sooty mold grows on that honeydew. In addition to all the wax and sooty mold it creates, you can identify it by the pattern uh, in which it lays or deposits its eggs on the leaves. It's usually the underside of the leaves. But it's a spiraling pattern. You'll see little dots in almost a bullseye spiral. It can be maybe three quarters of an inch across, sometimes smaller. But that's also an identifying characteristic of that particular white fly. They're also a very large white fly, much, much bigger than the ficus white fly. Neither one of those white flies are known for killing plants, but they do create quite a mess especially the ragose, where all that wax and honeydew can drip down onto the ground and onto your mailbox or into your pool, uh, which makes it difficult to keep your pool clean and that type of thing. The third white fly, the Bondar's nesting white fly, creates a little circle, usually on the underside of leaves. It's about a quarter inch across of kind of the white wax, and the white fly will be right in the middle of that. We're not sure how extensive that will be as a problem, but we're spotting it all over West Palm Beach and Palm Beach County and further now. With the ficus white fly, you really need to go with a soil applied insecticide, and there aren't a whole lot of those out there. There's more of a selection available to professional pest control managers, and you may want to just go with that rather than trying to treat it yourself. The most common products contain an active ingredient called imidacloprid. And imidacloprid is a systemic, meaning you can put it on the soil and it'll move up through the plant. And these white flies that actually are sucking juices out of the plant will get this insecticide and you'll get control of them. So the homeowner products that you can find are the fertilome, uh, uh, shrub and tree insect killer, the Bayer's advanced tree and shrub insect killer, and there's a couple other ones. I think there's an ortho max tree and shrub insect killer as well. Those are all imidacloprid, so you want to look for that active ingredient in the soil treatment. The other trick with those is to make sure when you put them down that you put plenty of water down with them, and then you keep those plants watered pretty well for a couple of weeks. Because so when you think about it, that, that insecticide, you want it to stay in solution and to be absorbed by the roots and then taken up into the plant. On a shrub like the one behind me here, 
you'll uh, get pretty quick acting activity. Um, if it's taller, it may take a little bit longer. You can also spray the foliage, and a lot of professionals will do both. Um, there's not a whole lot of things available for that either that are effective, and the downside of spraying is it's only going to last for about as long as you spray a little bit longer. The soil treatment should last for months if you put plenty of material down at the right rate. So things you can spray, soaps and oils are very effective. They're not going to wipe them out, but they'll knock them down, so you'll have to do repeat applications. And be sure if you're using oils especially, but soaps as well during the hot times of the year, that you go with a dilute solution of those or you can burn your plants. Now the Ragose spiraling white fly is more difficult to control, but you basically use the same products, the imidacloprid products. There's additional products out there for homeowners that include acetamidoprid or dinotefuran. So those products, uh, one of the homeowner products is called Green Light Tree and Shrub Insect Killer Granulars with Safari. And uh, those are probably, any one of those would, uh, would work also for the ficus white fly. So you want to go with the soil treatment of those things and then you may want to knock down the populations and some of that wax and sooty mold and crud off of the plants. So the way you do that, you can do that with just a a hose that's got a nice jet of water and wash them off, especially the undersides of those leaves. They particularly love coconuts, so you have to hit them pretty hard with that water. The coconut may be too tall to hit with a spray, though, uh, of water or an insecticide. Other insecticides like um, orthene can be used commercially or by the homeowner to control these things. But uh, they're a little more difficult, but we still recommend the soil treatments. Um, in addition, there are a couple other options for your tall trees. There are injection methods, and there's a couple of systems out there. They also use these systemic insecticides that they inject under pressure. And so your activity is very, very rapid, and they're very good kill uh, much faster, especially on the really tall coconut palms, which may take longer for the soil applied material to move up. So those injection methods can help. The problem with the injection method is you have to wound the trunk. You have to put holes in the trunks to apply them. And palm tree trunks do not heal over. Now, a broadleaf tree, no problem, they heal over. So uh, you want to keep in mind that that's going on, and the injection is a very effective method, but it, uh, especially useful where you don't want to apply material to the soil, so it's going to maybe be near a water body or you don't want to spray because you don't want to get it on uh, surrounding things and so on. Injection may be valuable, but be aware that you're going to be putting holes in the tree. The injection method has to be done by a professional for you. How frequently do you need to do this? It depends on the rate of material you put down in the method. If you're just spraying the foliage with soaps or oils or orthene or that type of thing, you may need to do it multiple times to get them under control. Uh, with the soil treatment at the right rate on the ficus white fly, or you should get several months of control. Uh, we're not sure with the Ragose spiraling white fly how long the control will last there. You also want to be sure that you're not just indiscriminately hitting every plant in the yard. Look for these white flies, and we've shown you some shots of them so you can see what they look like. Look for those white flies. Also be aware that there's beneficial insects and insect diseases out there working on these things. There are beetles. If you see beetles, little tiny beetles running around, those are a form of lady beetles. Many of you have heard of ladybugs and that type of thing. These ones are some small ones that we find around here. They'll be feeding on them. And then there's parasites. We call them parasitoids. These are little tiny, tiny wasps that attack the white flies and also control them in part. So if you're spraying the foliage, in addition to killing some of the white flies, you're also killing the beneficial insects, which are helping you. So that's why we recommend the soil treatment as your best way to go. The question often comes up, does weather affect these white flies? For instance, the tropical storms that we get, or even the winter freezes. And the answer is, yes, it does affect them, but it doesn't knock them out. So uh, recent tropical storms have washed 
the white flies off and they're like any other animal that's outside in the weather. They, you know, a lot of them get damaged by that weather. And so it's reduced the numbers and washed some of the uh, waxy flocculent off and some of the sooty mold and so on. But it's only going to be a temporary stop. They'll be back uh, strong. Their reproductive rate slows down when the weather cools. So uh, during the summertime, they're probably going through their whole life cycle in about 30 days. So it's pretty quick. It could be twice that long in the wintertime or longer. The other thing to remember that weather impacts is the uptake of some of these insecticides that you apply to the soil. If you're applying them during the cooler time of the year, they're not going to be taken up very well. So it's better if you can to apply your soil applied materials uh, in the spring as we move into the spring and then you'll have a nice uh, component of that inside the plants to help give you control as these insects start taking off and reproducing faster in the summer. It sounds a little complicated and it, and it can be. Um, if you need more information, you can contact the Palm Beach County Extension Office uh, Master Gardener Hotline. You can also go to our website. We've got extensive material on this on the website, including videos of workshops we've done and so on. If you just Google Palm Beach Whitefly, you'll find the Palm Beach County Cooperative Extension Whitefly website. Um, we try and keep the most current information on there and accurate information because with this particular group of pests, because they're so problematic, uh, people are, uh, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there too. So that website's a good place to go to get more information.